the angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. How Mary, for the grace of the Lord, is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. All forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In nome di Patris e Figli, Spiritus Santi, Amen. In Tuoi volatari Dei, e Dei purificati, Dio, con Tuo come è, giudica me Dei, stai dicendo caso, mem de gente non santa, amen, amen, e non è quello lo solo, amen. Quei tuoi stai, us, foti, tu, ma, e quali riflisti, quali tristi, sinceri, non ti rimedi, Dios. E mi tolute, un tormentato, un tumi, mi sembra di un saluto, tu, 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 Svering the old one of my talk of the table, you, Sevitari, who to smear a devil's mess. Gloria Patti, Filio, Spirito, is Santo, Sicula, and in Tincipio, and Monte Sente, and in Secula Seculorum, Amen. In joy, Volatari Day, I thank you, Tifica, you will talk to my own. Auditorium, those who nominate Dominic, who face your chair in the terra. Confitio, Don Potenti, Via, Maria, to the Egypt, Via, to the Tangelo, Via, to the Baptist, and Santo Gossip, Pedro, Paolo, Via, Via, and Maria, Via, and all your Santi, who is Gates. We will have given this cogitation, and we will offer me a culpa, me a culpa, me a maxima culpa. And I will pray to the Ata Maria, and send it to the Lord, and 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 the Lord, Beato mi vuole, Battista, e Santi se posso rispetto, e Paolo, omnibu santis, e ti ripate, e per te avvenire in scocitazione, e vengo a toccare, me ho culpa, me ho culpa, me ho maxima culpa, e io ho prego, beata Maria, mi sento di bene, beato mi cade, ma cangelo, beato mi vuole, Battista, santo se posso rispetto, e Paolo, omne santo, se te hai fatto, o trovare con me, a dove lo devo. Misericordia, vesci, mi potenzi, e usi, mi spettacoli, vesci, mi spettacoli, e vostri vita, e metà, no. Amen. Dolgenza, ma sussione, metà, missione, per ritorno, a sua ordine, vi vuoi, mi sono di contenza, misericordia, e dormus. Amen. Deus, tu conversi, tu fai di cavis, nas. Per plebi, tu lei, tavi, tori, in te. O stendi, non mi stavi, non mi ricordi, am tua. E salutare, tu, un danonis. Domine, gradi, d'azione, mea. E famo, mea, se te, venia. Domino, suo viscum, e cum spirito tuo. Orde, mo. Sancti tra i domini, un sesto mento, un pace, se fingi per fegi te, un muti di sacerdozi e dignitazia in eterno. Per mento, domine, d'ave, de domines, mansuetudini, sedus. Gloria, Pati, e Figlio, e Spirito, e Sono. Principio, e nunca e sempre, ed in secola, seculorum, amen. Sancti tra i domini, un sesto mento, un pace, se fingi per fegi te, un muti di sacerdozi e dignitazia in eterno. Iria eleison, Iria eleison, Kyrie eleison, Krisa eleison, Krisa eleison, Krisa eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax omnibus bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, Grazie a Gino, si mi pronte, ma non gloria a Tua. Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Benicotens, Domine Figlio Unigenite, Iesu Triste, 
Dabre Deus Anius Dei, Filius Patris, qui talis peccato mundi miserere nobis, qui talis peccato mundi suscipe deprecationem nostram, qui senis et exeram patris miserere nobis. Quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe, cum sanctus spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Exo vobis et cum spirito tuo. Ordemus. Deibus, qui ad predicandum gentibus gloria tuam, beatum willi prontum confessorem tuum atque pontificem miteri dignatus es, eus meritis et intercessione concede, utque nobis agendo precipis, te miserante ad implere postimus. Per Domino nostrum, Iesu Christum, Filium tuum, Et te cum vivus a regna ad unenitatis solitus sancti Deus, per non mia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordebus. Omnipotens semiterne Deus, qui nos omnium sanctorum tuorum merita sub una tribuisti celebritate venerati. Paesus, o desiderata nobis tue propiziazioni es abundantia, multiplicatis et accessoribus lagiaris. Per Domino nostro, mia Esu Christo, un Filium tuum, Qui te cum vivus a regna ad unanitatis spiritus sancti Deus, per ramia secula seculorum. Amen. Lex libri sapientiae. Ece se cedos magnus, qui in diebus suis placui Deo, et in ventus es justus, et in tempore ricundie factus es reconciliatio. Non es in ventus similisiri, qui consaltavit legnum excelsi, e Deo iure iurando fece illum dominus crescere in plenum suam. Benedictione Magnum Gentium Dei di Tili, et est mentum suum confirmavit super caput Deus. Agnofit evo benedictione bus suis, concepavit ili misericordiam suam, et invenit gratiam correm oculis tobi. Magnificavit evo con spetto regum, et dedit ili coronum gloriae, statuit ili testum mentum eternum, et dedit ili sacerdotium magnum, et viesificavit ilum gloria. Fungi sacerdotio et avere laudem in nomine ipsius, et offere ili incensum dignum in odordem servavitatis. Deo gratias. Ece se cedos magnus, quindi evus suis platui Deo, non es inventus similis ili cui conservare et legem excelsi. Alleluia, alleluia! Tu es se cedos in eternum secundum ordine Melchizedek. Alleluia! Nominus sua viscum, et cum spirito tuo, sequenzi santi vangelii secundo Matteum. Gloria a tibi Domine. In ino tempore, dixit Iesus, discipoli suis parabolum han, homo perica et proficiens, vocabit servus suos et tradidit ilis bona sua, et uni dedit quinque talenter, ali autem duo, ali vero unum, omni quique secundum propria vetutem, et profetus est statim. Habit autim qui quinque talente receperat et operatus est in Dei, se lucratus est alia quinque. Similiter et qui duo receperat, lucratus est alia duo. Qui autum unum receperat habiens fotit in terram et abstanti pecuniam domini sui. Vos motum vero temporis veni dominus sevorum milorum et pausu in rationem cum eis. Et accedens qui quinque talente receperat, obtulit alia quinque talente dicens. Domine, quinque talente retratidisti mici, Ece aria quinque superculutus sum. Et ili dominus eius, iuge serve boni e fidelis, quia super pauca fluesti fidelis, super multa te constituam, intra in gaudium domini tui. Ece sit autem, et qui duo talente receperate dei, domine, duo talente tradidisti mici, ece aria duo lucrutus sum. Et ili dominus eius, iuge serve boni e fidelis, quia super pauca fluesti fidelis, Summa multa te constituam, entra in gaudium domini tui. Laus tibi Christi. On this, the feast of our Holy Father, St. Willebrod, Apostle to the Frisians and founder of the See of Utrecht. The lesson is taken from the book of Ecclesiasticus. 
Here was a great priest whose life was acceptable to God and proved ever faithful to him. When the day of retribution came, he made amends for all. Where shall we find another to keep the law of the Most High as he kept it? So it was the Lord took an oath that he should be the father of his chosen people. The Lord gave him the blessing which should extend to all nations, renewing the covenant in his person, ratified the blessings he uttered and singled him out for favour, such grace he found in the eyes of the Lord. The Lord made him great in the sight of kings and crowned him with glory. He made a covenant with him forever, entrusting him with the great office of the priesthood and enriching him with high honour. He was to serve the Lord as his priest, privileged to act in his name and to offer incense to him acceptable in its fragrance. And the Holy Gospel is the continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time, Jesus told this parable to his disciples. A man who was going on his travels called his trusted servants to him and committed his money to their charge. He gave five talents to one, two to another, and one to another, according to their several abilities, and with that he set out on his journey. The man who had received five talents went and traded with them until he had made a profit of five talents more, and in the same way he who had received two made a profit of two, whereas he who had received but one went off and made a hole in the ground, and there hid his master's money. Long afterwards the master of those servants came back and entered into a reckoning with them. And so the man who had received five talents came forward and brought five talents more. Lord, he said, it was five talents thou gavest me. See how I have made a profit of five talents besides. And his master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since thou hast been faithful over little things, I have great things to commit to thy charge. Come and share the joy of thy Lord. Then came the man who had received the two talents. Lord, he said, it was two talents thou gavest me. See how I have made a profit of two talents besides. And his master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since thou hast been faithful over little things, I have great things to commit to thy charge. Come and share the joy of thy Lord. Ave Maria, grazie, plena Dominus tecum, meredicta tu rieribus e benedictus sultus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mate de orbro nobis peccatoribus, nunc in terrari motis nostre. Amen. In nomine Patris e Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi beloved in Christ, welcome uh, to this broadcast Mass on this, the feast of our Holy Father, St. Willibrod, Apostle to the Frisians and Denmark, and founder of the great see of Utrecht. Now, uh, aside from the fact that historically, of course, he uh, plays an important part in the history of Christianity in Europe, he also, too, of course, plays a particular, or has a particular significance to us as old Romans, of which this parish mission, of course, is a part, because we originate from the Diocese of Utrecht that he founded in the 7th century. Now, I'm not going today to talk very much uh, about uh, the life of St. Willibrod. Uh, I commend to you uh, the various sources online, just Google uh, Willibrod, W-I-L-L-I-B-R-O-R-D, uh, and you will find, uh, hopefully you will find uh, Alcuin's uh, life uh, of uh, St. Willibrod, uh, and it's uh, pages long, uh, and it explains in all the wonderful uh, ways uh, in which St. Willibrod was a great apostle of Jesus Christ, and indeed uh, brought the gospel to the low countries of uh, the Netherlands and parts of Flanders, Belgium, uh, and of course uh, to Denmark. He also, aside from founding the uh, Episcopal See at Utrecht, also founded the great monastery at Echternacht, uh, where eventually he himself would repose. He was a monk uh, originally, uh, began his novitiate at uh, Lindisfarne, the holy island there, as a pupil of St. Aidan. Uh, he was a contemporary, of course, of uh, St. Wilfrid uh, and others, uh, including, of course, St. Boniface, who was the apostle to the Germans, who indeed followed uh, St. Willibrod and then continued uh, his great work of evangelism in Northern Europe. Uh, St. Willibrod also trained in Ireland, uh, and it was perhaps uh, from Ireland uh, that he developed uh, this idea of becoming a missionary. Uh, certainly we uh, owe a great deal of the conversion to Northern Europe, uh, to the uh, uh, adventurous spirit, we might say, uh, of the monks of the Celtic tradition uh, hailing from uh, Scotland and Ireland and Northern England. 
It's worth remembering, of course, at this time that uh, uh, the mission, the Gregorian mission from Rome under St. Augustine, uh, had only recently uh, entered uh, uh, the United Kingdom. It wasn't the United Kingdom then, but uh, had entered England. Uh, and uh, things were still, as it were, uh, certainly when Willibrord was younger, uh, things were still sort of settling uh, between the Celtic, British and uh, Roman traditions. But anyway, uh, St. Willibrord uh, went abroad uh, to uh, the Low Countries and there, as we say, uh, had great success uh, in converting uh, those places from paganism to Christianity. Now, of course, here, my brothers and sisters, in recent times, you will be aware of the uh, Pacamama incident in Rome, uh, where a young, as we know now, Austrian chap, uh, went and uh, through uh, collected uh, some pagan idols of the uh, mother goddess of earth uh, from a Roman church, Santa Maria in Transportina, and took them to the Ponte Sant'Angelo uh, near the Castel Sant'Angelo and threw them off the bridge into the Tiber. And of course there's been uh, all sorts of commentary about this. Uh, some people uh, shocked by it, some people welcomed it, uh, ultimately, of course, uh, the principle behind what he was doing was uh, ridding uh, a church of uh, idols. And really, my brothers and sisters, we, we cannot be too squeamish uh, about this, as shocking as it may seem in our present age. I think largely because we have forgotten the notion of idols, we have forgotten the notion of paganism, we have forgotten the notion of, uh, of primitive religions, um, in this uh, Western uh, society, uh, this uh, society founded, of course, upon Judeo-Christian uh, uh, conventions uh, and uh, ideas. Uh, so it comes rather uh, strange to us, I suppose, uh, the, even the concept of a pagan idol. Uh, but, as I say, we mustn't be too squeamish, because in our past, uh, and certainly in Christian Europe's past, uh, the... Uh, the throwing out of idols, the trampling of pagan places of worship, or the conversion of them to Christianity was all a part of the evangelization uh, of Europe. And St. Willibrod was indeed like St. Boniface, uh, who was recently hailed, of course, as an example uh, to uh, that Austrian chap and others. Uh, St. Willibrod, of course, who taught St. Boniface, uh, was one of the first uh, to go uh, around uh, trashing uh, other people's objects of devotion and worship. But he did so, of course, because he was absolutely convinced of the rightness and the authenticity, the veracity of the Catholic faith. Uh, he did so, of course, with the admonition, uh, with the, sorry, with the approbation uh, of uh, rulers, uh, but uh, he was not fearful uh, and did not rely uh, on the protection of any uh, ruler uh, for his endeavours. Uh, again, I encourage you to read uh, his life by, Al uh, by Alcuin uh, and, uh, and read there for yourselves the various ways in which he very bravely uh, uh, presented uh, Christianity uh, in, contra in contrast uh, to the superstitions of the pagans. And by doing so, converted them and converted them, uh, note, my brothers and sisters, not by force, not by force, certainly by uh, the forcefulness of his preaching, uh, but he did not convert them by force, but rather he won their hearts to Christ. By indeed, when he uh, trashed the their idols, he exposed uh, the, uh, the inauthentic uh, nature of the religion that they conveyed and that they represented and it's there presented them with the truth and the light of the gospel. Now we, my brothers and sisters, in our own time, of course, are similarly called as Christians to evangelize, irrespective of what uh, Francis of Rome uh, suggests. We are indeed meant to share the gospel. But if we are to follow or emulate or take something from the example of St. Willie Broad, I urge you...
connected um, uh, the pagans to Christianity was the example and the dedication and the enthusiasm and the zeal and the conviction of St. Willibrord and his disciples, among them St. Boniface. And as we reflected yesterday and have re reflected all week during this octave of all saints, to be a living saint is essentially what Christianity is about. Forget, my brothers and sisters, this notion that has come out uh, in recent times of Christianity as being a kind of force for social good, uh, that uh, uh, ministers and, and clergy, are, as are their, their vocation is to be social workers. Uh, that is all nonsense, absolute nonsense. Um, we have no need, my brothers and sisters, to ordain people as social workers. All Christians should be about uh, the business of uh, correcting uh, and addressing the issues uh, and problems that are present in our societies. We all should be about uh, uh, homing the homeless, feeding uh, the hungry, uh, giving, uh, quenching the thirst of those uh, who are thirsty, etc. All these things, all of us as Christians should be doing. And all of us, of course, are charged, will be charged, uh, with uh, judgment concerning our fulfilment or not uh, of this ministry of service, of this ministry of charity. Remember our Lord himself says uh, that he will ask us uh, on that dread day, where were you when I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was sick, I was in prison, I was a stranger. And we, my brothers and sisters, ought to ensure by, the, by striving to be living saints, that we have and can answer uh, those questions. We, all of us as Christians, should be about uh, social welfare, social concerns. It is not, indeed, uh, the vocation of the clergy, it's certainly not the vocation of priests, to be social workers. We don't need to ordain people as social workers. We do need to ordain priests, of course, to minister the things of God and to teach the things of God. And that, my brothers and sisters, is uh, a, a need that is uh, extremely uh, uh, worth your prayers at the present time. As I said yesterday, there are not enough uh, uh, traditional Orthodox Catholic priests uh, available uh, to uh, tend to all the souls uh, that need the ministry of grace uh, which uh, they are called to administer. Particularly, of course, uh, we were referring yesterday to last rites, to our own end time in this uh, life. There are not enough priests, sadly, available to take the last rites, to take the Atticum, to anoint, to absolve, uh, and to prepare and fill with grace uh, souls leaving this mortal coil with the prospect of judgment. So of your charity, my brothers and sisters, pray for vocations, pray for true vocations to priestly ministry. And please, if uh, somebody, if, you, if a person you know is considering the ordained ministry and they're very much about uh, social welfare and reform and all the rest of it, suggest to them that perhaps they should become a social worker rather than a minister. We do not need social workers in the sacred ministry. We need sacerdotal uh, uh, ministers. We need, we need priests. Uh, we need those who are prepared to work for this ministry of, of God's grace. But all of us, both the ministers of grace and uh, the ministers of charity together, are required to proclaim the gospel effectively in our own time. And indeed, <coughs> in many ways, and as you know by my own example, I have uh, suggested that uh, the best way that we as Christians might uh, seek to uh, tie, uh, turn the tide uh, of the uh, present increase uh, and encroachment of secularization uh, in our society is uh, by ourselves being seen uh, to minister with grace and charity uh, the ills present in our contemporary society. 
already uh, the churches are involved uh, with food banks, with uh, homeless shelters, uh, with uh, uh, looking after and housing and sheltering refugees and migrants, uh, etc. There is still more yet work to do. As our Lord said, you will always have the poor with you. And the poor, of course, we may understand not just in terms of material uh, of materialism, but also in the sense of spiritual poverty. And there is, my brothers and sisters, a great spiritual poverty uh, abounding at this present time. That largely is uh, where all our society's problems are coming from. It's because of this impoverishment of people spiritually. Some, those, uh, some who are uh, spiritual, of course, are being led astray in all sorts of ways. Uh, and then there are those who have no, uh, sadly, uh, realisation of uh, the sense of spiritual self that they already, that is already a part of them. We are in many ways in a strange situation today, uh, whereas in contrast to times past, where people always had had a strong sense of spirituality. Uh, these days, of course, uh, with the encroachment of secularism everywhere, uh, it is, in, and even in the church, uh, we, there is a great uh, impoverishment of spirituality today. Some people don't even don't possess, simply don't have a notion of it at all in their lives. They may have uh, uh, some... Uh, vague inkling, uh, but they, they don't know what it is and they don't know what to do about it. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what we need primarily to address today. We will always, of course, as our Lord says, we will always have the poor, there will always be acts of charity and works of mercy to perform. But ultimately, the uh, evangelization uh, of uh, the peoples is what we all uh, should be focused about, focused on. And to do that, we need ourselves to be living the light of Christ in our lives. We need ourselves to be seen demonstrably, to be living what we believe. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what uh, so converted uh, the pagans uh, to Will Willie Broad's teachings. It was not just uh, his words, but it was his actions. It was the way in which he lived, and the way in which he and his disciples lived. The pagans would note how, they, uh, how the monks would take time to pray, how they would gather to pray, how they would bless their food, how they would seek uh, to minister to one another and even to those who did not believe. This is why Christianity took root because of St. Willibrod's preaching and teaching and example. If it had just been about force, if it had just been about forced conversions, then the likelihood is that Christianity would not have uh, retained in that place. But rather it grew. Rather it grew. And as we say, we noted Boniface had lots to work upon, to build upon, as he carried on that work of evangelization in Northern Europe after Willibrod. What converted people was the way in which Christians behaved, was the way in which Christians lived their lives. Now, as we've said before, we are not all of us called to be religious brothers and sisters. We are not all of us called to the habit. Uh, we are not all of us called uh, to the sacred ministry. So we're not all of us called necessarily to wear uh, those uh, external trappings that express our faith and say who and what we're about. Which is why all of us as Christians should clothe ourselves with righteousness which is why we should put on the armour of God, and which is why we should be uh, known demonstrably for our faith. And here, my brothers and sisters, is where the uh, issue today particularly lies uh, for the church. So we have this conflicting notion within the church, of, uh, or amongst Christians, of uh, Christianity simply as a, a social ethic, uh, or a social programme, or a social welfare programme, or a social action or campaigning uh, uh, organisation, in stark contrast to the supernatural concept of the mystical body of Christ, and of the reality and the realism that goes with that mystical body, which is about the reconciliation 
of, uh, of material with the spiritual. You see, it's not just, to put it another way, there are those uh, who think that the gospel is simply about being nice to others, about being nice to one another. Whereas, of course, the gospel is really about supernatural love, uh, supernatural power and sacrificial love. Now, of course, again, we, uh, and perhaps it sounds rather ironic, uh, in the same homily to be uh, at the one time putting down paganism and superstition, at the same time uh, 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 elevating uh, the supernatural. Uh, but of course, my brothers and sisters, uh, the truth is that we as human beings, our makeup uh, is not simply material. It is not simply material. There is an element of us, about us, uh, the spirit or the soul, as we call it, uh, that is, that is, of course, not material, that is spiritual, and it is a very real essence, a very real part of us. As I've said before, when you stare at yourself in a mirror, yes, you can see your external form, but you also have a sense, you perceive a sense of yourself which is beyond the physical. And so, when we as Christians... Uh, evangelize, we should not just solely concern ourselves with addressing material concerns and needs, but we also too should concern ourselves with the spiritual and we should manifest our spirituality, our belief in the supernatural, our belief in the divinity of God, in the reality of God, in the ability of God to intervene miraculously in our ordinary and daily affairs. It should be uh, demonstrable, it should be, sorry, it should be, uh, up, people should be able to see that there is something that motivates us, that moves us, that inspires us, uh, that is something different and other than just simply goodwill. What is necessary today, my brothers and sisters, is, is, is for Christians to manifest their faith their faith, not just their goodwill, but their faith. Their faith in Jesus, their faith in his miracles, their faith in his resurrection, their faith in God, their understanding, their worldview, that we are here because of God. We are here to serve God. And we are here ultimately to be with God, both now and forever. This, my brothers and sisters, is what we need as Christians to um, make more manifest and demonstrable in our lives. And we do this by, how do we do this? We do this by making a point of going to church, making a point of going to Mass, making a point of blessing our food before we eat it, wherever we are, of making a point of talking about our going to church, making a point of talking about with others how it is we are able to endure suffering, how it is we are able to uh, bear uh, trials and tribulations, how we are able to uh, uh, cope with life and with all that life has to throw at us because we have this supernatural belief, because we have this knowledge and because we have been touched by God. So Peter, of course, says to us in his epistle, Be prepared always to give an account for that hope which is in you. That hope which is in you. The great problem, my brothers and sisters, and this is the great apostasy of our time. There is, uh, and, and perhaps, well, there is, uh, a great blasphemy of the Holy Spirit abounding at this time. What is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is despair. It is complete and utter despair. It is an utter disbelief in the possibility of salvation. It is the absence of hope. And we know, my brothers and sisters, from various psychological reports and social commentators, etc., that there, the increase of, there is a presence of nihilism 
or nihilism prevalent in our society today. People are depressed. People are despairing. And the depression and the despairing is not, not ultimately attributable to simply their material circumstances or their material situation. My golly, we in the West uh, certainly cannot complain about our material circumstances. Certainly not in, in compared to the standard of living others uh, endure around the world and certainly not in contrast to uh, history. Uh, even to 50 years ago, even to 100 years ago or 150 years ago, uh, the advancements and the changes in technology and invention uh, that uh, shape our lives today, uh, we certainly, my brothers and sisters, uh, it is not impoverishment uh, of, of any kind that is the real issue in our society today. The real issue in our society today is not necessarily the way and the circumstances in which people are living, but the attitude that they have to life itself. great number of people are finding life unbearable, are finding life too difficult, and are living without hope. And this is why there is a steady increase in abortions, why there is a steady uh, increase in suicides, a steady increase uh, in assisted suicide, repeated calls for euthanasia. All of this is expressive of the nihilism, of the despair that is abroad in our society today. And sadly, of course, because of the blasphemy that exists, which is the great apostasy in the church today, amongst the majority of Christians, a lack of supernatural belief, a lack of Christian hope, a lack of belief that the Holy Spirit can and will change things. as I said yesterday, my brothers and sisters, truth of the matter is that so many Christians today do not pray with expectation. Do not live their lives purposefully with expectation. So many of us have been tinged by this nihilism around us so that many indeed are lukewarm in their faith. If every baptised person were a convicted Christian, and what I mean by that of course is a believer by conviction, meaning they absolutely believe in the gospel, there would be no need for this air of desperandum around us in our society. Because the light of Christ will be seen and witnessed in those lights to the world who will be making and seem to be making a difference to people's lives. In many ways, my brothers and sisters, half the church is asleep. As I said yesterday, we need to be awake, we need to be alert, we need to be vigilant. We need to be seeing and recognising and seizing the opportunities to, demonst to demonstrate the very real presence of God in our world. If we truly believe, if we truly have hope, then we, all of us as Christians, need to make this demonstrably manifest so that others can see it in us. So that others can see there is a difference about us. And chiefly, as I say, in the way we approach life, in our attitude to life. We should not, as Christians, no Christian should be walking around looking like Neil Esperando, where there is, there is 
no need for us to despair. And our lack of despair should inspire and give hope to others. We do this, of course, as we said yesterday, by striving to be living saints, by striving in our lives to live not for self, but for sacrifice. To live present, awake in every moment to God's will and the Holy Spirit's promptings. To seize opportunities of sin as opportunities of grace. To keep hold of ourselves, checking ourselves, making sure we are indeed uh, aware of our responsibility for every decision and choice we make. This is what it means to be alert, to be awake, to be vigilant in the faith. To use our noddle. So many people think, of course, that faith is all about the heart. It is not. It is about faith. The faith is about the heart and the mind. Our faith is a reasoned faith. Our faith is a reasonable faith. We are converted not just by emotions, in fact, least of all by emotions. We should, convert it, we should be converted by our heads, by the logic and knowledge of the Gospel. We respond with our hearts, indeed, certainly. But we believe not just because of our hearts, but because of our minds. And that's why, repeatedly, I always say, every Christian should be studying. Every Christian should be reading the Bible daily. Every Christian should be uh, studying the scriptures and the teachings of the apostles and the, and the fathers of the church. Not just leaving it to me, as much as it is my duty and joy and responsibility as a bishop to be a teacher, you should be educating yourselves as well. But all this so that we can be seen demonstrably to be living our faith. So that others can, so that we will, so that we are able to give an account of our faith, to give an account of our hope, to give an account of our belief. It is not enough, my brothers and sisters, to think that, uh, uh, to use that uh, misattributed uh, phrase to St. Francis of Assisi, uh, preach the gospel and use words if you have to, we need to do so much more than social work. We need to explain our motivation, why it is we do what we do, why it is we see and understand and un uh, appreciate ourselves as instruments of God's grace, as lending our hands and our feet to him to effect his and make manifest his love for all people. Let us then, my brothers and sisters, we are coming toward the end now of the octave of all saints, but we will not come, I'm sorry to tell you, to the end of our reflections about the Christian life and how we ought to be living as Christians demonstrably in our world and making manifest that conversion of heart and mind within us so that others may see and be drawn to the light of Christ. We should, as always, use this octave of, the, of all saints to renew our own vigour and faith, to renew our uh, prospect of heaven, to renew with joy our prospect of heaven and joyful expectation of heaven and of the next life. And by regarding, by celebrating and commemorating the lives of those who have gone before us and who have left such testimonies that we can see for ourselves how we, in like turn, can proclaim the gospel in word and indeed.
remember last night's uh, holy hour uh, from a sermon, the words of St. John Chrysostom, saying, there is no point saying that you're inspired by a particular saint if you do not strive to emulate their example in your own life, if you do not try to become another St. Monica, another St. Luke, another St. Jerome, another uh, St. Willibrord. Let us then, my brothers and sisters, take all this to heart. Let us avail ourselves of God's grace while it is available to us. To change and transform and redeem not just ourselves, but others and the world around us. That when God's kingdom comes, it may find a willing home among us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Credo in unum Deum, Padre omnipotentem, factorum celi et terre, visibilium omnium et invisibilium, et in unum Dominum iaesum Christum filium Deum unigenitum, et ex patium antum antri omnia secula, Deum de Deum, lumen de lumine, Deum verum de Deum vero, genitum non factum consustantial in patri, pequem omnia factus sunt, qui prote nos homines e prote nosum salutem de scendit de celis, et in calatus est de Spiritus Santo ex Maria Virgine, et homo factus eis. Crucifixus et sempre nobis upon superlatu passus et sepultus eis, et resurrexit es et eis, et corus ceturas, et descended in cenum sedere dexterant patris, et in terum venturus est cum gloria judicare vivus et motivos cuius veni non eri trinis, et in spiritum sanctum dominum et vivificantem qui ex patri procedi, qui cum patri et filio semele doretor cum glorificat mur qui locutus est per profetas, Et unam sanctam catholicam et apostolicam ecclesiam, confiti unum baptismo e remissione pedotorum, et ex specto resurrectione mortuorum, et vita venturi seculi. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo. Ordebus. In veri David servo meum, ora eo sancto meum si eo, Manus ene meu saliabit o te, et fratium mem papotabit eo.
Sancta Seculorum. Amen. <coughs> Dominus Hobiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, Susum Corda, Habemus et Dominum, Gracias Gaumus Domino Deo Nostro, Dignum et Justum Eit, Vere Dignum et Justum Eit, Ecom Salutare, Te Domine Supplicite Rex Orare, Et Ut Gregum Num, Tuum pastore tarne non desera, sed verbe atus apostolus tuos, continua protezione custodias. Ut iestum rectoribus governetur, ut posso peris tui vicarius, ed un codulisti presse pastores. Et ideo come gedis ed archangelis controlis e dominationibus, cumque omnibus e celestis exercitus, e non gloria e tui canibus, sine fire di cedis. Sanctus. Sanctus, Sanctus, Dominus Deus Sabrata, plenis un celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excessis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excessis.
Antonia Secula Seculorum, ad ordem sprecia di salutaribus moriti de vires nuziani formati, ad eus dice. Ad nostri di quei sinceri, sanguicetum momentum, veni ad reguntum, fie volontas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Pane nostro in quadriano da nobis hodie, dimica nobis debita nostra, sicula nostri minimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in denazione. De libra nostra mar. Ergamia secula seculorum, ad Caesa Dominis et Semper Agobiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo. Agnus Dei, qui tale spettato mundi, misedene. Agnus Dei, qui tale spettato mundi, misedene. Agnus Dei, qui tale spettato mundi, Ece agnus degi, ece qui tolet peccatum mundi. Domine non sum dignus, ut ingre su tectum meum, se tentum de glembo e sen abitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut ingre su tectum meum, se tentum de glembo e sen abitur anima mea. Domine non sum dignus, ut ingre su tectum meum, se tentum de glembo e sen abitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though Thou wert already there, I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen.
Daddy say was a blue dance going from sea to it, or minus super family and so on. Who did it is in temporary three, did you so on? Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo. Ordemus. Resta caesus ad ipotens eibus, une pecensis unieribus gracias et ementes, in the student of the Alto, we will grow to a professor to a pontifice and benefice of the Lord of Marcus. Our love in our master, we are in Christ, and we are in the Lord. We are in the Lord, and we are in the Lord, and we are in the Lord. We are in the Lord, and we are in the Lord. Amen. The Lord of God, 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 the Lord of God. Per Domino nostro, mi hai su Cristo un figlio in tutto, e te con due regni ad umanità di Spirito Santo e Deus. Per Romnia, secula, seculorum. Amen. Domino suo viscum, e con Spirito tuo, ite mi seis, neo grazie. Nome Domini Benedictum, ex et nunc dusque in secula, ob dormi nostrum in nomine Domini, qui feci cenum et terra. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Domino Suaviscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, enizium Sancti Evangelii, secundum Iovanem, Gloria Divi Domini. In principio era il verbo, 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 Non è l'etere lux, 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 Now may the fruit of the Lord is the blessing of our among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Now may the fruit of the Lord is the blessing of our among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Now may the fruit of the Lord is the blessing of our among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning, weeping, in this veil of tears. Turn, then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile will show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O laughing, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who art our refuge and our strength, O thou mercy on thy people who cry to thee, and by the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, in mercy will we hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. We are safe now against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and with our Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Thrust down to hell Satan and all wicked spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. O sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. May sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. May sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us. May St. William Lord of Utrecht, pray for us. St. Catherine of Stenning, pray for us. St. Wilfred of York, pray for us. St. Richard of Chichester, pray for us. St. Louina of Alfredston, pray for us. Our Lady of Walsingham, Pray for us. Our holy guardian angels, pray for us. Our heavenly patron saints, 
Pray for us, Our Lady, Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints. Pray for us.